one of my favorite podcasts to listen to. I would listen to it a lot when I would draw my animation. Um, was Web Comics Weekly. Um, oh, yeah. That's Chris Straub, Scott Kurtz, Dave Kellett, and Brad Geiger. Oh and yeah, I listened to them a few times. Yeah, I used to really enjoy that. Even though I didn't do web comics, I found mm-hmm. it really entertaining and interesting because these guys were actually doing it and right. successfully doing it. Mm-hmm. And they all had different perspectives. And I thought it was just a really well put together podcast. Um, anything that's done interestingly is actually a good, in my opinion, is a good show. Like, I mean, you know, Click and Clack, the, the yeah. car, car talk. You know, an NPR. Yeah. They, they're great. Oh, you yeah. Know, uh, and I don't know how to fix a car, but, you know, hey. Yeah, I know. They just, well, a lot of it has to do with their accent. Yeah, that's true. It's very, you know, it's just cool. But, Al-Qaeda radio. Okay. Great, great, you know, entertaining. <laughs> say any antics there. Um, so you don't have to be involved in, in the hobby to, yeah. to. But, yeah, Web Comics Weekly, that's a really, really a good good podcast. Yeah, I've, I've listened to them. That was years ago, back when I was doing... Right. I want I want your listeners, because I know you have billions of listeners um, at this point, and I want them to write these podcasts down, because I'm going to rattle off like four or five podcasts that I want them to check out. Okay. Uh, and I'll do it really quickly. Number one, go check out Geo After Dark. That's G-E-O After Dark dot com. Uh, Geo Braun, my friend... Uh, Basically, he draws vampires and naked women, and but is the nice, uh, nicest teddy bear guy you'll ever meet. Um, that's one. What's another He's one? He's cool, by the way. He's very cool. Geo's great. Yeah. Geo's great. And by the way, now you can hashtag all these people. So okay. Yeah. Oh, I got you. I got you. <laughs> um, what's no, I next? listen to I listen to Geo myself. So yeah. Yeah, Definitely. Geo's um, rocks it. What have I been listening to? What other podcasts have I been listening to? Let me look at my phone. I'll tell you right now. I. I I like deconstructing comics, though I don't. I they get a little bit long, so deconstructing comics. I never heard of that. Yeah, it's pretty cool. They break it down, break down the you know. The oh my god! I'm gonna kick myself. Okay, I got one for you, Paul. Yeah. Tall Tale Radio. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Racine uh, is. Yes, I've got. I'm subscribed to him now. One of the best podcasts, whether or not. I know this guy or not. He's no. one, one of the best podcasts out there. He's yeah. really professional, really right. funny. Um, that guy does his research when he – I was on his show. Right. And when he interviews you, like he'll have you on go, Paul, in third grade, you uh, yeah. got a C- minus in art. What made the turnaround? You know, that's his voice. Too. How did you read – I know. He's got a great radio voice. Here's another one. Here's another one. Surviving cre- Creativity. Oh, that That's sounds good. Scott Kurtz from WebCards right. really actually is on that panel, and it's him and two or three other. Oh, Brad Geiger's on it too. Oh, okay. And there's one other guy. I don't remember the guy's name, but it's a really the guy. The, the third guy on it runs it, kind of runs that show, and he's right. really good. He's a really good host. Um, of course, there's Lopez and the Lion. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you go to LopezandTheLion.com, that's a sports podcast. My two friends, uh, George and Nisam. They run it, and uh, that's really good. If you like sports, you'll love it. And uh, of course, there's Paul Paid podcast. It's okay. Boom, it's the three cool. P's I, in the pod cave. Three P's, the three P we call it. Um, and then one more. I'll give you one more here. If you go look up on Google, type in um, the fake explosion. The fake explosion, like explosion, but fake at the beginning. Mm-hmm. And you will be treated to dozens and dozens of Jim Lujan originals. Uh, it's all music from the films and music from my many, many fake bands that I've had. Oh. So you'll, hear, you'll hear bands like Perversion. You'll hear bands like, uh, oh, the legendary Discount Warriors. You'll hear uh, Grand Stanley, Man to Man. Bronx Larry, you'll hear uh, the Shrew, you'll hear. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is another thing I'm jealous of. Um, yeah, you, you hear the, you'll, you'll even hear the um, Swizzle Stick Army on there. That's oh. right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I got tons and tons of music. So I started my own little radio station there. So there's like ten episodes. That's like ten hours of music, though. Wow. 
Wow. So lots of fake bands. Yeah, man. I, I, I think it would be so cool to, to like, uh, make um, a band like the Gorillas. Mm -hmm. You know? I mean, if I had yeah. nothing yeah. else to do. You know, but I don't have any musical... <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> I These can't do days, the you don't need to know nothing, kid. You let the computer machine do all the bip bop, bibbity bop, bitty boop, bitty bop. <laughs> you just press a button and you collect the dough. That's all. Cha-ching. Cha-ching. Yeah, I'm definitely checking it, that one out. Fake explosion. For some reason, I thought you played an instrument. I play Garage Band. There you go. That's all. That's all you need. I'm making disco music and. Uh, by the way, by the way, I'm terrible at rock band. You know that game, Rock Band. Uh huh. Oh, I hate it. I can't <laughs> can't do that to save. I I'm awful at it and I don't like it. And it needs to go away from me. So. <laughs> hey, so what are you? You're working on. Let's talk about booyah. All right. Let's get back into the professionalism of our animation and what who I am, why I'm here. Um, <laughs> Why am I here? All right, I'll tell you a little bit about Booyah. Booyah is about a character named Big Papa Booyah, who is a professional wrestler, kind of a big old dude with cornrows and kind of a bad temper. And that character actually appears in a film I'm doing with uh, Bill Plimpton, mm -hmm. you know, the king of indie animation. We're doing a film together that's right in the, right in the middle of it. It's called Revengeance. And uh, that'll be out in 2016. And that film is about um, a biker gang and a, and a low-rent little ne nebbish bounty hunter named Rod Rossi, the one-man posse. And he gets tied up in all this stuff. And, and there's lots of hijinks. It's kind of like a Coen Brothers animated movie. Yeah, and, I can't uh, wait, dude. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. And, but what I'm doing is I'm doing a series of cartoons that is... I'm calling them, kind of unofficially calling them pre-vengeance, because they're kind of prequels to Revengeance. Right. And the first one I did was uh, about a character who appears in Revengeance, Big Papa Booyah. I did a prequel on him, but it takes place you know, years and years earlier when he's fit and trim and full shape. Because in Revengeance, he's a couch potato and he's probably 650 pounds and he mm -hmm. eats bags of chips, you know. And, <laughs> Yeah, but oh, in this, really? this is how he won his first championship. Oh, okay, that's cool. Yeah, so you get to see him in his glory day. So, I see. And, I, and I got some other ones I'm working on too. Those will be well, coming see, out because I've seen Booyah, you know, on your Jim Luhan animation channel mm -hmm. on YouTube, where that has you know tons of films, short films, but I haven't seen Revengeance mm -hmm. because even though I, you know, man, it seems like it's been forever. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm We're still, Bill's Bill. The way it worked is, I wrote the script, I just and I designed the characters, and then got those to Bill, and then Bill thumbnail storyboarded it out, and then he started animating it and working on it. But he's also got other jobs that come into play, like he's got commercial work. He's done two Simpson couch gags, I think, since he's been working on Revengeance. Oh, so really? He's got, yeah, he's got, and then he had another film that he was just had just finished, so he had to promote that. So Bill hasn't been working on it solidly since right. you know, last year, but even though no, every, I'm, every morning he wakes up and he says he does some work on Revengeance, like yeah, and the way that he animates, you know, is not like the way that I animate. Right? No, or or I mean, it, yeah. it, he actually draws every every frame, frame. and the whole the <laughs> shimmering the shimmering technique. Yeah, it's yeah. got to be, you know, it just like triple. How many different? Drawings does he do, do? Does he do like three? Two to that? three. Yeah. Two to three. I asked him about that. And even when a character's staying still, they're not still. They're they're right. kind of like, yeah. You know, going and in. he's a master at that, man. He really like nobody does that. Like in fact, if you see somebody else shimmering, it, you go, oh, they're kind of doing a Bill Plimpton. Have you watched Ed, Ed, and Eddie? Um, yes, they they do that. They shimmer on yeah. there. If, if my characters don't shimmer, my characters just they. They tw uh, twitch. <laughs> they move everyone. They have a yeah. They have a twitch. They have they have all my characters have Tourette's basically, <laughs> which makes for interesting cinema. Yeah, that's why the dialogue's so great. Uh, uh, but yeah, so Bill's working on that. We're literally in the middle of it right now. 
Um, it's been going great. I've seen a lot of uh, line animated, uh, like the line art and stuff, and it looks... I was just telling somebody earlier, it's on one hand very inspiring, but on the other hand it's like dejecting because he's so good. Yeah. He's so good. I see it and I go, wow, I can't do that. Yeah, I can't. It, yeah it makes you want to quit, right? Well, <laughs> it just makes me retreat back into my like, okay, this is what I do here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, do I don't do that. I do that. But I am, I am learning a lot from him, and and and. I bet you are. Every time I see the footage, new footage come through, and I just analyze those scenes, and I, I like, I use it like a textbook. He doesn't even have to tell me. I'm looking at it, going, "Oh, that's because it's not colored yet." Like, a, no. uh, some of it is colored, but a lot of what I see is not. It's just line art. So I go, "Oh, okay." I should try something similar to that, or you know. Speaking of uh, analyzing, so I want to, I want to have the conversation that we had about um, how I could improve my filmmaking. You want me to be your analyst? Yes. Okay. Well, back. Yes. Okay. How does it make you feel? Yes. Um, we had a conversation about how I could, you know improve my filmmaking and your advice was the magic word editing editing, editing. yeah it's all in the editing because your drawings are, are fantastic your colors are great your camera movements are great it all comes down to editing yeah cut it out <laughs> cut, yeah. cut, cut, cut. Uh, if a if a character is standing you know for 10 seconds always ask yourself could he be standing for four seconds and we're all guilty of it because what happens is, and I found this out. I've been doing the, I've been doing my cartoons for forty nine years, and <laughs> let me tell you what I've learned in the last <laughs> two years. Um, I learned that we're all very precious with our our animation and comic work and artwork and paintings and whatever it is, music. <laughs> But everybody's because you go, oh, I can't cut that one little second because that's the second when his eyeball goes there. That's the that best blink, drawing of the film. That blink happens right on the beat where I wanted it to happen, and it just it just really get and no, it doesn't matter. You can right. cut it. It's like it's like cleaning your house. You know, you sometimes just gotta get rid of stuff, get rid of it because otherwise it starts. You're a hoarder. Yeah. So, right. <laughs> so no, your your sense of editing is really good. You. You, when you we talked, you were asking me kind of like what it could even kick it up even more. Yeah. So you can win two awards next time. <laughs> and I, I always say it's editing because your sound's good too. Your sound's really good. You know, the other thing, I never mentioned this to you and I should probably tell you now in public, embarrass you in front of everybody. The, the other thing I would say would be ambient sound on your cartoons. For example, um, and it's, it's kind of a really cool trick. When you have like two people in a room talking, mm -hmm. instead of just their dialogue, and if you have music in the background, you can get away with it with no ambient sound. Right. But if there's no music and it's two people just talking, like go outside or go in your room and record just ambient noise, like the noise of faraway traffic, the noise of birds or whatever, right. and play that really low, not the same level as the voices, but play it low in the background for the right. whole scene. Because what it does or what it doesn't do, I should say, is if you don't have it, it sounds like the people are talking in a vacuum. You know, right. it's like they're in space. They're like, I'm speaking, and then silence. Or right. I'm speaking, you know, then silence. So if you have that ambient sound, it really, like, ties things together nicely. So there's another tip, kids. Cool. Look like... Oh. Hello. Ken. Are you on... Uh, can you see me? Uh, yeah, hold on just a sec. Let me uh, turn this thing on. <laughs> See, we're, we're, here's where you're editing. I know. <laughs> Ken, you're, by the way, you're, uh, you're, you're, uh, you're on the podcast already. <laughs> we are in the middle? <laughs> yeah, I'm in oh. the middle of my podcast with Jim Lahan. Oh. Hey, Ken. Nice to hey, meet you. Hey, how's it going? Good. Good to meet you. And I, I'm very excited. I saw your work earlier, and it's amazing. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I'm a huge uh, Ed, Edward Gorey fan, and okay. when I saw your stuff, I was like, "Oh my god, that this is so cool! It looks like like Edward Gorey stuff." Yeah, 
yeah, it's a uh, it's a big inspiration. So that's uh, kind of actually how I reignited my uh, my passion for drawing again. Just looking at his stuff, because um, you know when I was a kid, I started drawing and then kind of got away from it. And then just a few years back, I saw his uh, artwork, and that kind of just reignited. I started you know drawing that style and creating my own stories and things like that. So yeah, it's definitely a, a big influence. That's awesome. The same thing happened a long, long time ago in a galaxy far away. I, w I went to the library and got and just found one of his books. I didn't know who he was. I was just like, this looks really, it's the one with the um, the letters in it, the alphabet. Yep, the alphabet. Um, yeah. And Dashley from Tiny's, the most popular one, I think. I looked at that thing for hours and hours, like look at all the crosshatch. And then, it, and then I bought some little pens with little tiny, you know, Mm -hmm. Tips and I realized, okay, I can't do this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is the same. yeah. It, takes, um, it takes a while. Yeah, yeah. your stuff is great. Really. You got a video, Ken? Ken? Um, is it not? Let me turn it on. Uh, like magic. Oh, there you go. Let's see. The little wheels.